Ma'am, I've got to thank you for your time. I like your statement, I must say. It, is, uh, it shows that you have engaged extensively with the report itself and you make incisions into it uh, from various angles. And I'd like us to take it step by step. Let's start with you know, how you believe the report has enhanced our understanding of state capture as a phenomenon. But you quickly point out that uh, the depths of corruption in our country have not been reached by this investigation. Um, first of all, good afternoon to Lassizwe and to the listeners of ENCA. Um, indeed, um, we, we looked at this report from a number of angles, and I think I want to start by saying we really commend um, the, the, the commission for, for the work that they've done over a period of almost four years, very rigorous, very professional work, um, which we, we really all followed. But, but when you read through the report, it's as if you weren't watching those interviews. It, it makes your blood boil all over again um, to La Um I think what, what the overarching sort of impression we have is that the promise of a developmental state um, you know, rooted in ethics and good governance has been completely compromised. And, and this by really deep-seated um, corruption, which gripped our state. Um, when we read through the report, it just reaffirmed our understanding of the phenomenon of state capture, which really entailed, uh, I'd say, four, four main factors, um, being um, creating a shadow state where decisions, key states, key decisions about our state are made outside of the executive. Um, then you have the SOEs which are targeted um, to La Cizue and really hollowed out by firing efficient um, ethical executives and replacing them with pliable co-conspirators. Then these SOEs are repurposed for the purpose of corrupt companies and individuals to La Cizue. And then the fourth one was really around the capture of the National Treasury and SARS. And we all know what happened to ministers like your Ntlantla Nenes and your Praveen Gordon around that. So, so, so it's not new, but it just really affirmed that these really are the phenomena of, of, of the state capture. Yeah. Um, when we say... Um, yeah, yes, go ahead. This is where you're coming in. Yes, go ahead. So for us... For us, what, what has been the first thing that jumped out of us as a concern, um, which is not in the report, but it is in the reaction of those who need to implement the recommendations of the report. Um, President Cyril Ramaphosa said himself, which is quite shocking, to say there was a resistance within the ANC around even the release of this report and how its recommendations must, must be implemented. You had Minister Gwede Mandashe saying, don't attack cater deployment because this is going to kind of impact on, on the transformation agenda, as if cater deployment has been legitimate enough to, to promote uh, transformation in this country. You then had the ANC Women's League saying, oh, wait a minute, um, the, the, the way that the report is implemented must not create, must not target certain people or create divisions within the party, which once again, Tula Sizwe, brings us to this issue where our governing and ruling party seems very internally focused, seems very ANC focused mm -hmm. to the detriment of South Africans. How yeah. we can solicit this kind of a reaction from them after this report is absolutely shocking. One of the things that jumps out for me from your media release is that you restate, not that it needed restating, but you do restate anyway, that transformation, a transformation agenda cannot sit uh, compatibly uh, with the levels of corruption, systemic corruption that we have seen over the years. And while you talk about the issue of you know, transformation, including transformation of the civil service uh, and the, uh, the cadre, uh, you know, um, <laughs> I, I use the, the unfortunate term there because we just talked about cadre deployment, but nevertheless, the cohort of, uh, you know, civil servants and professionals and people in boards, etc., that are meant to serve the public in public institutions, you attack that and you address that directly uh, by making a proposal, one once again, for an independent professionals panel. Is this to be juxtaposed against a cadre deployment of the ANC, which, you know, as we are seeing now, uh, had the potential to be, um, you know, steered in a different direction? So first of all, I, I want to touch on, on, on why we feel that state capture really undermined the transformation agenda. If you throw your mind a few years back to La Cisa, you'll remember that when there was 
a, a sort of a cohort of, of really good deals that were happening. Yes, BEE had its, its, its own fallibilities. However, there was a time in the country where we had a government that had the legitimacy to push a transformation agenda and to tell private sector to transform. Um, we may question the merits and, and the sustainability and who benefited and who didn't, but government had the legitimacy to, 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 to push this, and private sector was responsive to that. Currently, because of the state capture phenomenon, as the government, you, you, you have absolutely zero legitimacy to go to a private entity and question where are the black people on your board, where are the black people in your executive, what is your, your, your shareholder ownership, because your own house is absolutely filthy. And, and that is really the, the challenge we have around this as it pertains to slowing down and delegitimizing the transformation agenda. With regards to the independent professionals panel, um, Yes, it is in just a position to cater deployment, which we really feel has failed spectacularly. What we are proposing is to have a panel of credible individuals, and I don't really want to call them by name, um, uh, uh, but for example, we could have the CEO of the I IODSA, we could have the former Auditor General, uh, 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 Mr. Terence Nombembe, we could have the likes of Bonang Muhale, Rural Kosa, um, and somebody did say to me, are we then not recycling? But there is a caliber of those leaders who could assist the president or the government to place in these organizations credible people in the boards, particularly because accountability and ethics start at a board level. And the way we're currently seeing how boards get appointed in SOEs is extremely disturbing to us, where you just need to check how many SOEs are currently under administration, where a minister comes and just fires the entire board and appoints an administrator at their own whim. And we then expect those SOEs to perform in a way that is a sustainable and for an ethical culture to be inculcated in those SOEs. We will never have that, um, Tula Sizwe, at this rate. Yeah. The other aspect that I want to tease out before I run out of time, and if I have time, um, we might raise one, one, one other point uh, towards the end, but the, the, the issue around the private sector, uh, you raise it sharply in, in, in your media statement. We've seen Bain uh, being uh, singled out, um, some uh, individuals at NetBank and also NetBank also being mentioned uh, by the Commission in its report. Uh, of course, they are disputing uh, the level uh, to which, uh, you know, of participation uh, or otherwise by NetBank or individuals employed by NetBank. There are many, many examples. EOH, there are the auditors uh, that failed uh, to do their duty uh, in as far as SAA is concerned. What, what is the point that you are making about holding the private sector in particular to account for their deeds or misdeeds? I think here, um, Tula Sizwe, I will actually link this with this deferred prosecution issue, which I think is probably the next issue you were going to touch on. The private sector has been shown to be absolutely complicit in the state capture phenomenon. Government officials, politicians could not have done it without the public sector. I think Bain really is highlighted just because of the, the current uh, quagmire around Bain and BLSA. And I actually saw just before I came on, 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 on onto your show that Bain has pulled out of, of BLSA. And that is, a, that is just a topic on its own, because we cannot fathom how BLSA, uh, a, a, an organization that prides itself in accountability, ethical conduct, anti-corruption, stood for this vain thing against a, a massive public outcry. And that really brings me to this deferred prosecution um, issue to La Cizue, where, where we're saying that, does it mean that if you've got the financial muscle to so-called pay back the money, then you are exonerated from from prosecution. We, we don't think that that's enough. First of all, that is going to create a scenario where you're going to have to be selective, where if, if, if an individual, for example, cannot pay back the monies that he signed for or colluded with the likes of Bain to, 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 uh, to siphon from the state, if he cannot pay back the money, he or she, then they get prosecuted. But Bain gets away with it because they've got the financial muscle to, 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 to pay back the money. That, that, is, that is completely unacceptable to us. What we want to see, Tula Sizwe, is a Bell Pottinger type rejection of 
private sector companies, both locally, but we are even more angry at the international companies who dared come into our country and commit what we believe is actually a crime against humanity. Um, things that they would never do in, in, in Asia. They would never do that in the UK. They would never do that in the US. And that's why perhaps there was a particular focus on Bain because they are a US company who came into our country yeah. and, and, and committed these crimes. The, the last thing to us is, is that with this state capture phenomenon paying back the man the monetary loss is is but a tip of the iceberg um to la Ciswe. our health sector is funded from those taxes SARS so stopped collecting taxes because it was compromised our education of our kids is compromised people live in squalor with pit toilets because yeah. the government doesn't have the funds to 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 fund services and 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 we expect that once you pay back the money you can just go scot-free we we we, we completely reject that to the I've got to thank you for your time and your insights. One little thing for me to add to your many examples uh, around transformation and uh, systemic corruption not being compatible. Just this week we had the handover, finally, of the dairy farm in Friede to rightful beneficiaries after initially it was derailed uh, by state capture in that you know there were other people benefiting. Only now do we have 62 beneficiaries who are actually, who are meant to have benefited for all of these years. But let's leave it there. I've got to thank you for your time. Uh, that's Essay Tumangotua there from uh, Black Management Forum, where she is uh, the newly elected deputy president weighing in on the report into state capture, part one.